Hey everybody, it's Brian from Team Aquascape. I am here in freezing, freezing cold Chicago, Illinois. Just about to catch a Uber ride to Florida. And in less than five hours, I will be changing this scenery to this, right? We are in sunny Florida and I am so happy. I can't wait to show you guys what we're gonna be doing. build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. So like I said, we are in sunny Florida and things are happening fast. But the reason we're here is myself, Mr. Hansen, Ed Ballou, the pond professor, Greg Wistock, half of our team are down here to build three ponds in two days. That's right three ponds, water features in two days. Ed's doing something amazing over there at Blake's Exotic Animal Ranch. I'm over here at Sam's house. We are gonna convert a swimming pool into a magical looking oasis for all kinds of tropical fish. We're gonna do a little fountain feature in there. And Chris, that man over there, look at him, just getting stuff done. You can just tell, he's a doer, he's a doer. He is gonna be building a fountainscape. So Chris is doing a fountainscape. That man, Ed the Pond Professor, is gonna go that way someplace and build this amazing otter pond for Blake. Just give me kind of a background on Sam and what we're gonna be doing out here. <laughs> so Sam is a uh, breeder of exotic uh, tortoises as well as iguanas. So he's got an incredible collection. But what we wanna do is we wanna create kind of a, a living pool. So right now he's got an old swimming pool, hasn't used it in years. He's got a couple ducks, they've been swimming around in it. Water quality's been really, really bad. So he wants to uh, not only have ducks in here, but he also wants to add koi, maybe cichlids and stuff like that. So he's got a massive pool, 20,000 gallons. Let's so we're gonna turn look it, at it into an upflow filter exactly like what we did over at Ohio Fish Rescue. So a huge wetland filter down in the bottom in the deep zone. So we don't really need a deep, deep pond here at all. Plus there's no other place to actually do filtration. So what we're gonna do is turn this deep area into an upflow biological filter using our patented snorkel and centipede system, which everybody has seen that stuff a thousand times. This is gonna be a unique application though, because we have to make a level area down in the bottom. So the challenge is normally we're digging that stuff out of virgin soil so you can carve everything, you can make all those little pockets. Now we have to work reverse, building it up with cinder blocks, crushed rock, and all that type of stuff, which is gonna be a nightmare. <laughs> but I know Brian. And I'm here for who? <laughs> Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Over in the far corner, the plumbing and pumping system doesn't work right now, so we're just going to abandon it. All the pumps and plumbing are going to go inside the pond. That far corner is going to get our pump fault as well as aqua blocks to create a pre-filter. Plumbing runs directly inside, so everything literally is going to be inside of the swimming pool. <laughs> you got it? <laughs> I don't think he took a breath that entire two minutes. That was insane. That was impressive. So Ed, I think what's even more impressive is we have over 150 certified 170 was what I heard. Yeah. I think some of those are Aquascape <laughs> oh, employees. Oh, okay, maybe. Yeah. Okay. We have over 3,000, <laughs> no, 150-170-ish certified Aquascape contractors coming in. We call it the winter retreat. I don't know how much of a retreat it is as much as a boot camp, <laughs> but um, we're going to get three projects done in two days. In two days. Oh my gosh. You guys, wait till you see <laughs> what we do here. Wait till you see what Ed does. Can't wait to show you what Chris is doing. Till then, we're going to turn this into this. <laughs> We just got 12 tons of limestone yes. delivered out here to Sam's house. Yep, I know that. What? I, I know <laughs> that might be a no-no to a lot of people because you're worried about pH. South Florida has an elevated pH level already in the groundwater. That's because this is the bedrock. So by adding in limestone into an elevated pH, it's basically neutral. Now, if you took this same bedrock and brought it into Illinois, where our pH is in the low sevens, then it's gonna to start to elevate it because it wants to equalize itself. By adding this here, that's the native stone. So I haven't had any issues. We did an incredible project over at Kennens. I helped with Pondscapes of Fort Lauderdale on a project using this stone and multiple projects at Blake's house and all of them right now are stained. Awesome. You guys got it. I knew somebody would ask, isn't limestone a big no-no in ponds? Yes, in certain parts of the country, not in Florida. What do we call that? 
10 pounds of ish in a 5 pound bag. <laughs> so it's been kind of a crazy morning. We're just trying to get all of the product and everything ready so we can continue to build this thing. Our first step is to take that crushed stone that got delivered and flatten off this bottom. So a pool obviously has a slope that kind of comes down like this. We need to create a flat bottom here so when we build our wetland filter, we have something flat. <laughs> We're kind of going back and forth on how to do this. We have to create a wall of some sort, right? Because normally when we do a wetland filter, we dig down, and then you dig a trough for your centipede and your snorkels and all that kind of stuff. Here I can't dig down, I actually have to build up. The thought was in this area right in here to actually start building a wall. Now we could build that out of cinder blocks I could mortar it all up or whatever, but I think I actually have enough aqua blocks where I can take aqua blocks, build them up, fill the aqua blocks as we're building with rock and gravel, use that as my wall, drape a piece of liner down in front of it. Whole purpose of the liner would be so water as it's coming up doesn't move through the aqua blocks this way. It hits that liner membrane, says it's too hard to move through that, pushes up and forces that water to move up through all the different stone and aggregate through our wetland filter. So I think that's what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna go count our aqua box, make sure we have enough and uh, get that all figured out. I think it'll make a whole lot more sense as we start building it. But here we go. So the idea is we've leveled off our base. Jack, pull that fabric back for me for a second. Take gentler steps because I've spent a lot of time leveling the base. You're too aggressive of a walker. So we've got our gravel in. We've created a base basically for the bottom of our centipede. So what we're gonna do now is because I don't want this stuff migrating around a whole lot. Jack's gone ahead and cut a piece of fabric. So we're gonna take that fabric, put it over the top of this. That fabric's gonna extend all the way out through here and eventually keep overlapping and go throughout the entire bottom of this because Sam doesn't want to see any of the white stuff on the bottom here, the bottom of the pool. We'd much rather see black if the fish over time start exposing stuff. So we're gonna get this set, then I'm gonna take this centipede, drop the centipede in, then we're gonna take those cinder blocks, build up alongside of the centipede. The suspense has got to be killing you. Stay tuned and I'll show you what that looks like. guys so hopefully this is making a little bit more sense you can see our built up excavation is the easiest way for me to explain it but we've got our wall of cinder blocks on either side our centipedes running in here the gravel then comes up to here so imagine if we were digging this this would be earth earth dig a trench for the centipede right and then earth over in here so we're trying to get this level with the top of these cinder blocks then what I'm gonna do is take a piece of rubber liner, scrap piece of liner, roll it over the top of this, let it fold into here almost like shingles on a roof, do the same on this side, then put our aqua blocks. That way when we wanna clean this and we start sucking down through the rock and gravel above our aqua blocks, it'll eventually hit that rubber liner, sediment and stuff that builds up in the aqua box will get moved over into the centipede, which then can be all collected by the snorkel once a year and pumped out to keep this thing clean. It is humid, it is hot, but I asked for it because it's still better than that negative some degrees over there in Chicago. Hey, tomorrow is going to be a big day. CACs from all over the country are coming out here, so I think we've done pretty good with our prep. We're going to add a little bit more gravel, and then uh, we're going to call it quits for the day. See you tomorrow. Bye. Good morning, everybody. And it is a good morning. It's cooled off a little bit. It's the calm before the storm. And what I mean by that is sooner than later, we're gonna have about 30 contractors come in here to see us convert this tired old swimming pool into that pond.
So you can see we put our liner in over our gravel. This rolls in like that. Then we're gonna get our aqua box in like this. You can see them tucking this side over here. And then here's the wall we built on this side. We basically just took our aqua box, took the tops off of the aqua block, filled them up with gravel, and then stuck these down into there. And we might have to come up with one more. So this rock is coming to start building basically a foundation like we did this for that over there. So this is gonna be our pump area. You can see we've got things roughly laid out here. We're gonna have to do something to retain all of this, which will make more sense in a second. Perfect observation deck. <laughs> So now you can really start seeing this thing come together. Again, there's our wall. We're gonna come up one higher. Right now I didn't do that because I was worried about the pressure as we were putting things in here, pushing that wall over. You can see Josh over here. He's got that leftover liner coming here. He's backfilling. So pretend this gravel is soil. We'd be backfilling to get these aqua blocks in there. So the idea is that water comes through that pipe, through our centipede, up through these aqua blocks, then through a layer of bigger gravel. We've got some like three to four inch type stuff that's gonna sit on here. And then we'll come with smaller stuff over the top. Eventually getting all the way up to the top of that snorkel unit over there. Josh. It's almost like you know what you're doing. I actually am, Mike. <laughs> Carl, explain to everybody what we're, we're looking to do down here now. We want to create an infrastructure wall back in here to really create some stability for this wall, right? We're going to start building wrap, rip wraps out here and then gravel and rip wrap to support and sustain all this area. Nice. Yeah. It's going to be pretty simple. Pretty simple. Yeah. A, lot of, a lot of manual labor. I see everybody bringing in one rock at a time using those fabric slings. Yeah. And I guess that would be the hardest part about this job is really the access. It's just difficult. Notice where they're stacking the rocks. They're stacking the rocks out quite a bit. The reason they're stacking them out so far is I've got to eventually get that rock all the way up to the height of a second row of aqua box. If I were to just start stacking them right up here, stability wise, it gets a little weird. Also this rock, because of the angle of it, it's not very stackable. So the better way to do it is come out here, backfill with gravel, set another course, backfill with gravel, set another course, and kind of stair step your way up into this wall. This is what we call a six man rock. And it really should be like a 10 man, but you can't get 10 people around it. Oh my gosh. You can only imagine how big that rock is if six guys are trying to carry it. Let's undress it. Oh, it's like opening up a Christmas present. <laughs> You guys should all get around it and like pose by it. <laughs> big layer of gravel and we like to come over the top of the aqua box with something more like two to three inches. We've got somewhere around 17 inches of this stuff down in there. Then over the top of that, we come in with more of this like three quarter to half inch type stuff. And the idea is, is that water is coming up, it disperses out through the aqua blocks. It won't come up through the gravel right away because as it's dispersing out through the aqua blocks, it hits this layer. It says, no, thank you. Do I want to go in through there? So I'll spread out evenly this way. Then it comes up through this stuff, which has bigger spaces. It'll initially want to go up, but then it hits the layer of this stuff, which is hard to get through. That'll force that water then evenly come up through all this. Then we come in over the top of this and we're gonna come up to the height of this half aqua block here. So this is our final height. We've done two full aqua blocks and one half aqua block here. So we're gonna do about nine inches now of this gravel 
and then we'll be finished with our wetland. The reason we didn't finish all this gravel up in here is because we needed some structure on this side to hold this wall from really wanting to push back and forth. So we're trying to do both of them almost simultaneously, then holding this in between. You can see the liner that's draped down in front of all of these aqua blocks. That'll ensure that water comes up through all this stuff. It doesn't want to seep through those aqua blocks. We want it to force up through here and then pour over the edge. The water level in this swimming pool is going to be basically back up to full, right, right into here. So the top of this wetland filter is still a good two feet below grade. And then we'll come in here and do some fountainscapes and blah, 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 make it look all pretty. We have a problem and the biggest problem is so we've got this 20,000 gallon pool and we don't have water to fill the thing the hose will run for about an hour before we dry out the well and then uh, it takes about another two hours for that well to fill back up before the hoses will work again we do have a water truck coming but a water truck only holds something like 5,000 to 6,000 gallons so we would need an estimated almost $3,500 to fill this up so I think what we're gonna do and it's actually not a thought anymore this is hundred percent what we're gonna do I found some water so we're gonna take this stuff which is teeming with life you can see all these minnows there's actually some giant turtles so right now we're working on a method to get water from here all the way down the driveway up and over the wall and into that pool huh lemonade out of lemons <laughs> happening right now so he's doing some things with rocks uh-huh he's doing some things with pipes he's on his phone but was doing stuff with rocks <laughs> you know what and the guy's been doing something with rocks for 99 percent of the day and we caught him on the phone for the one percent <laughs> you guys i'm smiling but i think i'm struggling to smile and it's not because i'm not happy i'm like tired At the end of the day it just gets like this but i am extremely extremely happy at our progress we got a whole lot done doesn't it feel like every hour there was some type of obstacle whether we couldn't figure out water then we started pumping it out of the ditch then they said we couldn't pump it out of the ditch then we ran out of gravel then the dingo died which smelled like it died. Stole all our fittings. Somebody, uh, somebody stole all of our fittings. But where there's a will, there's a way. The things are going great. We are probably at the point where we're gonna be wrapping it up here in the next 30 to 40 minutes. You can see all the gravel in our wetland is done. Guys are shimming up our urns. The reason we shimmed them up is because we wanted a little bit more elevation out of them. And so Josh and the guys are figuring out all this. Obviously as one pipe comes in with one pump, everything needs valves on it so we can really monitor the water level and what it's doing. So I'm just loving it. Hey, pond guy, how's the rest of this stuff going? If Ed pulls off that, that window, <laughs> like that is not, that's a lot of, <laughs> I was telling the guys earlier, you remember how in your presentations you said at one point somebody is gonna ask you to get water, water to pour off the roof. Oh yeah, off the That's roof. what Ed's job is right now. Yeah, pretty much. Right? <laughs> yeah, so I'll be, the, 
scuba chocolate, scuba vanilla yeah. for Chris over at the Fountain Scape, which I'm on to right now. Uh -huh. And but Ed's project, we'll see if it holds water. Oh, that's Rocky Road, and and uh, never, never seen something you know, like that some outside. Pistachio <laughs> mint or something over there. <laughs> so it's awesome. I heard Chris is doing really well with his Fountain Scapes. Ed, I know, has got a challenging project over there. Limited access and a lot, a lot of work to do. So if we can muscle through this, get done a little earlier over here, then tomorrow we'll go help him. But I can't wait to take you guys over to those projects, show you exactly what Mr. Hansen built. Cool fountain scape, an incredible backyard. And then of course, that outer window is gonna be super cool. And Ed, I know you got this. I know it, because you've never not. Go get him, Ed.